Okay, so I'm going to go through this quickly. These are the instructions. Um, on Classroom, you have the presentation that I was going to present and not share with you. And then you have the student work, okay? So have the student work open. What I was going to do is give you two minutes to read this. And then I was going to display these questions, one, two, and three. On here, in this spot right here, one, two, and three, you would put A, B, C, D, whatever the answer is, okay? So on your own, time yourself, give yourself two minutes, uh, read this. If you get done faster than two minutes, fantastic. If it takes you longer than two minutes, then we need to um, work on your the speed at which you read. Then you're gonna go on to read the next section. The sides are drawn. You have one minute to read that, so 60 seconds. Then you have two more questions to answer, four and five. Again, you would just put whatever the corresponding answer is. This is not anything for you to answer on the test, or I'm sorry, on the student work, but like this is Archduke Franz Ferdinand. This is the city where he was assassinated at. It's important that you understand the reason. Is because this area right here, Bosnia, used to be part of the Ottoman, Ottoman Empire. Over the course of two different Balkans wars, the Ottoman Empire was pushed out of the Balkans and countries which used to be under the Ottoman Empire become independent. And so one of them is over here, it's Serbia, and over here is Bosnia. When they become independent, the Serbs want Bosnia to be part of their kingdom of what's called Greater Serbia. And that is because both the Bosnians and the Serbs are Slavic, okay? And so is Russia. So they have an ethnic connection. And this is part of nationalism, right? Nationalist feelings. Now, the Austro-Hungarian Empire took this because you know, for one thing, it can. And two, it doesn't want people to create governments um, based on ethnicity. This is the Austro-Hungarian Empire, okay? It's made up of all kinds of different ethnicities. You've got Austrians, Ruthenians, Galicians, Slovaks, Hungarians, you know, Slavs. And so it was really important to them that they deal with Serbia in such a way that they know that, no, you're not going to get this. This is part of the, of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. All right. So, you know, the Serbs were angry enough to kill for it. With the death of um, uh, the Archduke here, the Austro-Hungarians were willing to go to war with the Serbs. So that's the background here. All right. Now, back to this assignment. You're going to read this. No time. You can read it at whatever pace you need to, but you're going to highlight it, and you're going to use red if what it's talking about is, is militarism, uh, green if it's alliances, blue if it's nationalism, and orange if it's imperialism. Okay? Read this, select parts of it that are appropriately militaristic based on alliance, nationalism, imperialism. Then you have two questions here, six and seven. You go back to this slide, read this, and that's where you would find your answers. Okay? does not have to be in complete sentences for six and seven. This is a closed reading right here, the domino effect. You would find that here, okay? So you're gonna read this, fill in the missing words. All right, once the combat begins in, in 1914, the two alliances, the Triple Entente and the, tri the Triple Alliance, that's no longer the case. Now what we have are two new alliances that changed throughout the course of the war. One is called the Central Powers, and one is called the Allied Powers. What you're going to do is write in the countries that belong to which, um, which of the two alliances. Now, the United States is slightly different than the others because it says 1917, and that is because we do not enter into World War I until 1917. Now, that doesn't mean that Italy and Japan entered in 1914, but since this is U.S. history, I'm only requiring you to know that the U.S enters in in 1917. Okay, next is two uh, videos that you have to watch and then answer questions to. But on the presentation, this is just background information again about like how Europe was divided into what alliances before the war and then what happens once the war begins. And this gives you some more context. Like it tells you that Italy joins in 1915 and the United States joins in 1917. So don't assume that just because 1914 happened, all of the, the countries that are part of either alliance was, was involved in fighting, because that's not the case. And then this is the same thing, the domino effect, just 
you know, in case you miss something, understand how they interact with each other, okay? And then here's the first video. It is nine minutes long, okay? And you have five questions answered from the video. And then here's the second video, and it is 10 minutes and 55 seconds. And you have four questions. And that's because the second one, this uh, second video, we kind of covered a lot of it, not all of it, but much of it. So once you have that done, turn it in. All right, if you have any questions, you can um, text me, or not text me, you can email me, or you can send me a message through Google Classroom. Um, I don't expect this to be done today because I don't know when, when these issues are gonna be resolved. But if they are, then you know you wanna get this turned in. Try to have this to me no later than say Wednesday by noon. Okay, now tomorrow, hopefully we won't have these problems and we will be able to just resume what was already planned, which is uh, about the fighting of World War One. All right, that's what I have for you guys. Thank you very much.